Hello, my name is David, and all of this tat around me right now, it, it will make sense eventually. Anyway, today I'll be covering the creative process behind my most recent animated short film, Locked Doors. Now, I've made a lot of animated short films over the years, but this one easily has had the wackiest production of them all. This film was part of a challenge that I set for myself to complete a whole animation from start to finish in just 14 days. Two weeks. Except those 14 days ended up being spread across three and a half years. Let me explain. Day one. Locked Doors' journey started all the way back in May 2019, and I remember being very sick at the time. I was brainstorming ideas for new films, and inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft, I came up with a film called The Thing Behind the Door. That name in reference to H.P. Lovecraft's own pulp sci-fi horror naming conventions, which eventually got changed to Locked Doors. I wrote the script, paced out the film, and recorded all of the voice acting in one day, using my then very sick and raspy voice to my advantage for the disheveled main character. Those could be the only two words I'm still pronouncing properly. For all I know. I then abandoned the film, just totally forgot about it. This is very normal though, because I mean, I come up with tons and tons and tons of ideas for films, but I can only animate so much. Most of my ideas reach this exact stage, and then they're shelved. Now, we skip forward three whole years, almost to the day, to now late April 2022. I had just bought a new work computer, a laptop, which is portable so I could work wherever I wanted, like here, or here, or even here. Hey, no, up, up here. Can I be in your film? This totally changed up my workflow structure completely, and to test out the efficiency of this new system, I decided to do something stupid. You see, this happened just over two weeks before my birthday, and for some unholy reason I saw that as a challenge. I decided to look into my my dusty folder of unfinished abandoned ideas, and locked doors seemed the most doable. Especially enticing when I realised that all of the voice acting and script files were dated to the same day, meaning I was officially just one day into production so far. If I was going to finish a whole film in two weeks before my birthday, I had 13 days left to do so. Day two. On day two, I began by chopping the film up into 13 doable blocks of work. Everything from designing the characters, the world, choosing colours, making the 3D models, animation, editing and recording sound effects all had to be accounted for. The only thing I didn't make for this film was the music and about 5% of the sound effects. Once I had my schedule set out, I began the real work by sketching out this basic layout of the ship's interior, as well as a sketch of the titular locked door, and started 3D modelling. 13 hours later, I had this, a fully finished 3D set for the spaceship interior. A big inspiration for the look of the interior of the spaceship was grungy, lived-in retro sci-fi like Ridley Scott's Alien, unsurprisingly one of my favourite films. The last thing I did on day two was whip up this crude mock-up of one of the more prominent shots in the film using this spaceship interior. Here, I was testing out what colours and tones I would be going forward with. Day three. I started day three by doodling this sketch of the main character, and then got to work creating the animation model. I spent another 14 hour day 3D modelling, texturing and rigging this character in two states, clean and dirty. 
pre-disaster and post-disaster. I also created a 3D rig for his crewmate, but she is mostly just a head swap of the clean version of the main character, so, so you know, she didn't take very long. Again, I looked to Ridley Scott's Alien for reference for these outfits. I think you can definitely see a similarity between my orange jumpsuits in the film and Ellen Ripley's blue-grey jumpsuit. This is also where I had to create the Gaia Corporation logo, as I wanted it to appear on the suits of the characters. For something that I banged out in like less than 30 minutes, I'm pretty happy with it. Day four. After two very long days of work, day four I took a little easier, working on the remaining 3D assets for the film. The traitorous, backstabbing green iguana and the imaginary alien. The lizard was very straightforward. I, I know lizards, I love lizards, I have a lizard, and nature has already pretty much nailed the design of, a, of the green iguana for me already. But the alien I had to design from scratch. I was quite tempted originally to follow on with the 1979 alien inspiration for my imaginary alien, but ultimately decided that a H.R. Geiger-esque xenomorph ripoff was probably going a bit too far. Instead, I looked to another tremendous source of creative inspiration for me, the films of Guillermo del Toro. I did a few sketches and liked this drawing the most. Usually I'd go more in-depth with this sort of thing. Creating monsters and creatures is one of my favourite things to do for my short films, but I had a very strict time limit, and this does the job. Day 5 Day 5 is when the grind really started. I had my characters, I had my set, my colour scheme was, was, was done, and now I had to start animating. I decided to animate this film in chronological order, for simplicity's sake. I think there were originally like 58 total shots in this film, but as I animated it I, an I added a few here and there. Regardless, I started this animation marathon with shots 1 through 5. Now, my animations use a mix of 3D and 2D techniques, using a mix of Blender and Photoshop to achieve the look. Take this shot for example, from my Dinosauria series. It uses 3D animated characters that are 3D modelled, rigged and animated in 3D, but textured to look as 2D as possible. The environments that these characters inhabit are drawn in 2D from scratch. Drawing all of these unique 2D backdrops is by far the most time-consuming part of my animation process. The trick that made this film even remotely possible to animate in under two weeks was 3D modelling and texturing that spaceship interior. The film still uses my 3D characters on 2D backdrops technique, I just don't have to draw that backdrop from scratch every single time I move the camera. A lot of the backdrop is already finished, I just render out a single frame, touch it up in Photoshop, add all of the extra little details, and drag it back into the scene. Access denied. Day 6. Day 6 I animated shots 6 through 10, including one of the most prominent shots of the film, this wide. Comparing this wide, this finished wide, to the original mock-up, you can see just how important that original mock-up ended up being. From here on out, honestly, was a, is a bit of a blur. This was the main grind, churning out shot after shot after shot. Day 7. Day 7 I tackled shots 11 through 17. 15 hours of work, more of the same. Day 8. Day 8 is when I started to forget what day it even was. The grind had really set in by now and I created shots 18 through 21. Shot 18 in particular was a challenge. A lot of extra 2D work for this one painting the greenhouse. 14 hours of work in total on this day. Day 9. Day 9 I started by animating shots 22 through 28, and this is when I really started to lose my mind. Fittingly, this is also the point of the film where the main character starts to go completely mad as well. Man, I can remember relating very hard to the pure madness and determination in those eyes. And it didn't stop there. 
I must have worked about 20 hours straight on day 9. Well into the night. I, for some reason, decided to jump ahead of schedule and started animating shots 29 through 33. The alien stuff. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the reason I did it is because I just really, really wanted to start animating that alien. I didn't slow down on day 10 either. <laughs> day 10 was the meat and potatoes of the film. That was the heart of the quick cut montage in the middle, where I easily had the most fun. I planted myself down, stanky and mushy brained, monster energy drink and delicious chocolate mini bananas by my side, and animated shots 34 through 44. A whopping 11 shots were animated and rendered this day finishing off the entire montage. Day 11. day 11 was the day I think I forgot how to speak, as the woman around the corner shop asked concerned if all three Monster Energy drinks were for me, and I replied with a confident uh -huh. This day was actually quite frustrating and boring because this is the day I had to go back and fix a bunch of mistakes I made in previous shots. Small things like timing tweaks, errors in the animation, and so on. After all of that was done, I then continued forward and animated shots 45 through 52, which weren't the most exhilarating shots to animate either, so definitely the worst day of the two weeks. Day 12 I wanted to do something fun, so I skipped ahead and animated the big one, shot 57. I drew a couple of quick and crude sketches to, to get sort of a feel of how the AI iguana plant woman amalgamation was going to look, and ultimately decided on this. Remember, my mind was a puddle. This made sense to me. It took me all day to create this, to draw it and animate it. Around 12 hours of work, and it really paid off. Something about nature-themed body horror and mashing people together into one thinking being must really disturb me, because the theme can be seen in a lot of my work. Funnily enough, this image reminded me a lot of a painting I did for college a few years ago, this two-piece canvas painting, and until I realised I painted this around the same time as I wrote Locked Doors, in early 2019, so it likely wasn't really a coincidence. This was the day I animated the last of the film, shots 53 through 56 and 58 on top of the second and last round of pickups, fixes and animation tweaks. I had forgotten my name, I smelled like a big sack of poopy garbage, and had long since graduated from delicious chocolate mini bananas to the big boy mega sized chocolate bananas, and finally, every shot of locked doors was done. My original plan was to keep going, do one more day, of editing, sound effects, title screens, and totally finish up the film. But here is where I had to stop. My birthday was in two days, I was totally brain dead, fried, and needed a rest. And so, locked doors went dormant once again. I abandoned the film for another six months. Day 14, the final day, was November 8th, 2022, exactly three and a half years to the day from when I started this project. I spent this day editing the film together, being utterly amazed that it worked at all, honestly thinking that this was going to be a mess, and finished everything up. This included colour correction, creating title sequences, and recording sound effects. As far as sound design goes, I use a combination of my own recorded sound effects and royalty-free internet stuff for my animated short films, but around 95% of the sound effects in this film are my own, the highest amount of any of my animations. The most interesting sort of tidbit is probably the, the Halo Nerf gun that provided most of the mechanical sound effects.
So, a whole animated short film in just 14 days. Spread over three and a half years. One day of regular work, 12 days of pure madness, and one day of regular work again. Was it worth it? Well, in that middle section, I was working... Uh, 10 to 20 hours a day for 12 days in a row, and that's not healthy. Big surprise. It was more fun than it may sound though. It was very creatively rewarding to see how much work I could get done in just two weeks if managed well enough, and I'm frankly quite astonished at the, the, the quality, the, the polish of this work. All of this looks great, and there's no sign of it being rushed whatsoever, at least to me. But, and I'm really not joking, I barely remember doing any of this. Day 1, I was really sick, and day 2 through 13, I went insane. D on day 14, when, when I had to go through everything and put it all together, it was like slowly unpeeling some repressed trauma that I've deliberately deleted. If I didn't keep a written log of all the all of my work hours and all the things I did each day as they happened, I would never have been able to make this behind the scenes video. So do I recommend you try this? Was it worth it? Absolutely not. No. Don't do this. It was terrible. <laughs> Holy moly. But what do I think of the film itself? as a film. I, I like it. To me, this is a very simple story of a man who wants to know what is behind a locked door, but not knowing is the only thing that's keeping him alive. Not knowing is also slowly driving him mad. Not knowing for long enough will eventually kill him, but knowing will instantly break his mind. It's, I think, a classic, cynical, dark, Lovecraftian horror story of impossibly monstrous truths of our reality that we should never know about, and our never-ending ill-fated quests to uncover those mind-breaking secrets. <gasps> the film also has just a, a lot of personality, more than it really needed. I love the dark humour, the aesthetic of this world, the colours, and, and, and all the fun little details I managed to cram in. I like how the man has attempted to mend the cracked window with a simple piece of duct tape. The, the man has also lost one of his shoes because he's using it as a plant pot. And, and I like how, at the halfway point of the film, he, the man you can see has drawn a city skyline on, on the back windows when his mind starts to, to crack to forget that he's lost in space. The thing behind the door probably needs a little bit of explaining. The thing is supposed to be a sentient, biomechanical amalgamation of all the missing crew, now turned into the ship's beating heart, with a single directive. Keep all crew members alive until rescue arrives. And this was the only way that they could. Exactly how this happened is up for interpretation, but obviously had something to do with the mysterious anomaly blue that the ship was sent to investigate. like this film a lot, but it still has a bunch of big ol' flaws. Uh, I think the mysterious Anomaly Blue stuff is a bit too vague. It's supposed to be vague, but it is definitely too vague. The film is also too fast-paced, I think, and doesn't give enough time to explore its central idea to the fullest, leaving, leaving the viewer perhaps a little bit more confused than they should be at the reveal. All of which, by the way, are problems I feel plague a lot of my earlier films, which makes sense. Locked Doors is one of my earlier films. Also, just noticed this while making, while editing this making of, but that shoe must be full of poo. There's, <laughs> there's probably, there's, there's probably no, little to no soil to take advantage of on this ship, so that's, that's definitely a, a, a shoe full of poo. That's a poo shoe. <laughs> anyway, that's that's it. If you want to support me, uh, please check out my Patreon page. 
I didn't make a sketchbook for this film, obviously, I would had no time to, but through supporting me you will gain access to my whole catalogue of previous animation sketchbooks. You'll get frequent updates on upcoming projects and two weeks of early access to my animated short films. Thank you all for watching, but the video is over and that means I need to go outside and film some b-roll for the outro, which today, man, I think I'm just going to walk down to the park and film the river or something. Just a lovely cold autumn stream. Super special thanks to all my top Patreon supporters on screen right now. Hopefully scrolling over some footage of a lovely river. Without you guys, these animated short films would not be possible. Uh, so again, thank you very much. Bye guys. <laughs>